Hi guys, so this is the fifth video where we are going to continue with heterogeneous equilibria, KSP, and common iron defect. So, uh, precipitation are important industry, medicine, and everyday life. So, sodium carbonate is based on a precipitation reaction. Uh, they dissolve in tooth enamel, which is mainly calcium hydroxide. It's an acidic medium that leaves the tooth decay. And barium sulfate is an insoluble compound that is opaque in X ray, used in diagnosis of ailment in the digestive tracts. So consider a sparingly soluble salt of silver chloride when they dissolve in water it forms a saturated solution where you have AgCl solid with AgCl aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. So the product of the concentration for the Ag plus and also Cl minus is a saturated solution of silver chloride is called as a solubility product of silver chloride. So based on the equation, the K, uh, Kc can be expressed uh, Kc can be expressed as Ag plus times Cl minus over AgCl. So we arrange to get Kc times AgCl give uh, Ag plus plus Cl minus. Since Kc and C AgCl is constant, therefore uh, when we derive it, it can be derived into a new co equilibrium constant called as Ksp. So Ksp is Ag plus times Cl minus. So another example is lead to hydroxide, which is a base. It's sparingly soluble in water. In aqueous solutions, lead to hydroxide dissociate according to the equation where PbOH2 gives Pb2 plus plus 2OH minus. So the Ksp of lead to hydroxide is written as Pb2 plus times OH minus squared. So in general equations, if you have AxBy give X AxBy give XAY plus plus YBx minus. So Ksp can be written as a y plus power of x b x minus power of y. So the unit of Ksp depends on the stoichiometrical division of the overall ion equations. So for example, if you have HCl, so HCl gives Hg plus plus Cl minus. So the product Ksp is Hg plus Cl minus. The unit is small square decimeter cube. If PbBr2, which dissociate to become Pb2 plus and 2Br minus, so Ksp is Pb2 plus and Br minus square. The unit is small cube dm minus 9. If you have AgCl04, so AgCl04 gives Ag2 plus plus Cl04 2 minus. Ksp is Ag plus square times Cl04 2 minus. The unit is also the same as above. Barium sulfate gives Ba2 plus plus SO4 2 minus. Ksp is Ba2 plus SO4 2 minus. The unit is small square dm minus 6. FeCO33, so you have 2Fe3 plus plus 3CO32 minus, so Ksp, Fe3 plus square times CO32 minus cube, so the unit is small, which 5 dm minus 15, and calcium phosphate is Ca3, 3CA2 plus plus 2PO43 minus, so Ksp is as accordingly, and the unit is small, 5 dm minus 15. So solubility is the quantity of solute that dissolves in a unit solvent. Uh, at a given temperature. So thus solubility is often unit uh, measured in the unit of gram per decimeter cube to mole per decimeter cube. So the relationship between gram per decimeter cube to mole per decimeter cube is distinguished by using relative molecular mass or molar mass. So if you want to change from gram per decimeter cube to mole per decimeter cube, you have to multiply with the RMM and conversely if you want to change from mole per decimeter cube to gram per decimeter cube, you have to multiply with RMM. Whereas solubility product of a sparingly soluble salt is the product of concentration of ions in the saturated solution at a given temperature. So the concentration of ions are raised to appropriate power depending on the stoichiometric coefficient of equations. So therefore there is no fixed units for Ksp. So Ksp is the extent of the solubility product that can dissolve in water. Generally, higher the value of Ksp, the more soluble the salt is. So below I'm going to show you some examples of how to calculate Ksp. For example number one. Given the solubility of AGI is 6.24 times 10 power negative 8, calculate is Ksp. So you have to write the dissociation equation where AGI give Ag plus plus I minus. So uh, X amount of AGI will dissociate to give X amount of Ag plus plus I amount of uh, I minus. So Ksp is equal to A plus plus Ag plus times I minus. So X times X. So given to you solubility is 6.24 times 10 power negative X. Uh, 8, so substitute into the x as 6.24 times 10 power negative 8 square. So press the calculator, you get 3.89 times 10 power negative 15 moles square dm minus 6. So uh, calculate the solubility of the calcium carbonate given the solubility product is 4.72 times 10 power negative 15. So you have calcium carbonate, so Ca2 plus plus CO3 2 minus. So um, you have x give x plus x also, so you have Ksp is equal to Ca2 plus times Co3 2 minus, so 4.72 times 10 power negative 15 x times x, so equals to 6.8 times 10 power negative 8. So calculate the solubility given the solubility product, so this is the equation, so you have Ag2CO4 
give two AG plus plus zero or four. So it's x give two x and x. So when you substitute it, KSP is equals to two x squared. So you have x times eight point four times ten power negative five more but as meter cube. Then finally, if you have iron three oxide, so same things can happen. So if you have uh, one iron three oxide, give one iron three ion and three hydroxide ion. So x give x plus three x. So KSP is Fe three plus times OH minus Q. So x give three x Q which is equals to 27 power of 4 so you substitute the solubility inside here okay so you get the solubility product is uh, 4.01 to 10 power negative 7 more power of 4 to 8 minus 2 12 so this is generally of how you sum, uh, calculate solubility using solubility product or conversely calculate solubility product to solubility so table below shows you the expression, some of the examples and their expression and how to relate between solubility product and solubility. So uh, this is a very good guidance, so hopefully you can uh, apply it well and use it appropriately when the time comes. Next, we're going to have a look what is common ion effect. So solubility of a substance is affected not only by temperature but also by the presence of other solute. Given the KSP of the manganese hydroxide is 1.6 times 10 power negative 13 mole cubed dm minus 9, let us compare the solubility of MnOH2 in water and in NaOH. So after calculations, you can see that MnOH2 gives Mn2 plus plus 2OH minus, you get 4x cubed, so x is equal to 3.4 times 10 power negative 15. However, if you dissolve in 0.02 or sodium hydroxide, so in the base, uh, hydroxide is contained, contribute mainly to the OH minus. So when you substitute, you substitute OH minus into here. So in uh, here you have 0.020 square. So calculate, you get x is equal to 4.0 times 10 or negative 10. So uh, note that if you substitute here to become two x's, so you have uh, 4.0 times 10 or negative 10 times 2 plus. 0.02 also approximately equals to 0.02. It shows that adding strong base to MnOH2 will not cause a drastic increase of the OH- solution. So generally, we can substitute the strong base into the OH- without finding uh, without finding the x and two x things. So uh, how can we explain this phenomenon? So when a strong base which dissociates completely in water, for example, NaOH dissociates to give Na plus and OH minus, it causes the OH minus ion to increase. According to Lee-Chartier principle, if you add the concentration of the OH minus, equilibrium will shift to the left. So when equilibrium shift to the left, it causes the solubility of the uh, manganese hydroxide to decrease because you form more MnOH2 in solid. So decreases. This will decrease the solubility of the salt. So such effect is called as common ion effect. So the common ion effect is the suppression of ionization of weak acid or weak base by the presence of common ion for strong electrolytes. So from the example above, we can make use of the factor of pH to control the solubility of the substance involved. So consider in the equilibrium where you have MgOH2 give Mg2 plus plus 2 OH minus. If you add OH minus, increasing pH, it will cause the equilibrium to shift to the left, therefore decreasing the solubility of MgOH2. On the other hand, if you add H+, plus, which decrease the pH, shifting the equilibrium to left or to right, because um, OH minus will be added with H+, plus to form uh, H2O, so you have OH minus will decrease, so equilibrium shift to the right, so uh, this is the effect of it. Uh. So the effect, to explore the quantitative effect of pH on the solubility of MgOH2, let us first calculate the pH of the saturated MgOH2. So after substituting, you have uh, KSP is equal to S times 2S squared, you have 4S cubed. So substituting the solubility product into 4S cubed, you have the solubility of the salt is 1.4 times 10 power negative 4. So substitute S into 2S, you give the concentration of OH minus is equal to 2.8. So POH is 2.8 times 10 power negative 4. So pH is 10.45. So in another word, if the concentrate, uh, if the pH has a medium less than 10.45, solubility of MgOH2 will increase. This is followed from the fact that lower pH indicates a higher H plus, and thus lowering the concentration of OH minus. So uh, consequently, Mg2 plus will rise to maintain the equilibrium, and more MgOH2 will dissolve. The dissolution process and the effect of extra H plus can be summarized below. So when you cancel here, you cancel this one, cancel this one. So at the overall equation, you get MgOH2 with 2H plus, Mg2 plus and 2H2O. So however, if the pH has a medium higher than 10.45, concentration of OH minus will be higher and this will cause the solubility to decrease because of the common ion effect, could even shift to the left. So this is how we explain about the common ion effects inside here. Finally, we are going to learn on how to predict the precipitate form or not. 
So from the knowledge of solubility rules and solubility product, we can predict whether a precipitate will be formed when a mixture of two solutions or edible solution compound, soluble compound into solution. This ability often has practical value. So in industry and laboratory, we can adjust the concentration of ion until the ion pursues to exceed KSP in order to attain a given compound. So the ability to predict precipitation is also useful in medicine. For example, kidney stone, which can be extremely painful because it consists of largely calcium oxalate. So uh, oxalate ion is derived from oxalic acid presence in many vegetables such as rhubarb and spinach, uh, which react with calcium ion to form insoluble calcium oxalate, which gradually build up the kidney stone. So proper adjustments of the patient diet can help to reduce the precipitate form. So at a particular temperature, KSP value indicates the maximum product of the ion concentration in the solution at equilibrium. So you have Mx gives M plus plus X minus. So ionic product Q is Mx plus M plus times X minus. So the expression is very similar to KSP. It's just that uh, M and X are from different sources. So if ionic product Q is equal to KSP, so we set system as at equilibrium, so you form a precipitate. Similarly, if your Q is greater than TSP, system is not at equilibrium and the solution is super saturated. So the concentration of ions are too high and thus the salt will also precipitate. There is only one condition when the salt will not be precipitated if it's the Q is lesser than KSP. So if Q is lesser than KSP, the system has not yet achieved equilibrium, has not yet saturated, so therefore no precipitate will be formed. So this is the only uh, factors which precipitate will not form. So below, in order to show you how to predict whether precipitate will form or not, I'll prepare three examples for you. So examples one, we will precipitate form with 50 centimeter cube of 0 0.5 silver nitrate is added to 50 centimeter cube of 0 0.1 potassium bromate. So uh, you have to, because we are mixing two different solutions, you have to recalculate the concentration by using M1V1 equals to M2V2. So when you calculate the concentration after the mixture, you get concentration of silver ion is 0 0.025. Same goes with the bromate ion. So you so M1V1 equals M2V2 the value and you get your new concentration equals to 0 0.05 so since HBL3 gives HG plus plus BLO3 minus so Q is equals to HG plus and BLO3 minus so substitute each of them accordingly to the appropriate value so you get your Q is equals to 1.25 and then on negative 3 so because Q is greater than KSP in here so therefore mixing both solutions will form the precipitate of HGBLO3 Second example, with a precipitate of PAF2 uniform with 150 cm3 of 0 0.5 barium nitrate, it's added to 50 cm3 of 0 0.05 of potassium fluoride. So uh, for barium nitrate, so you have to recalculate the concentration since you already formed two mixture. So the new concentration will be 0 0.0375. For fluoride ion, you use M1VN equals M2V2 here, so your M2 also equals to 0 0.00125. So apply to your, uh, based on the equation, BAF2 gives BA2 plus plus 2F minus, so Q is equals to BA2 plus times F minus square. So you have 0 0.0375 times 0 0.00125 square, which will give 5.86 times M1 negative 8. So since Q is lesser than KSP, so therefore no precipitate will be formed um, when you mix between these two solutions. Finally, if you add exact 50, 200 centimeter cube of 0 0.4 of lead nitrate to 600 centimeter cube of magnesium chloride, you will precipitate form. So in here, uh, PB2 plus, after you recalculate, you get the concentration of PB2 plus is 0 0.01. Now, note that this is MgCl2. One MgCl2 will give two Cl minus. So at the end of the day, you have to multiply by two. So first calculate the concentration. So use m one v one equals m 2 v 2 so your m 2 is 0 0.06. So because one MgCl2 form two Cl minus, so your concentration of Cl minus is 0 0.012. So substitute inside the equation, you get 1.4 times 10 power negative 7. So this is same to the uh, KSB, therefore precipitate will start to form. Okay, okay. So with this, I finish the final part of the uh, essay base. So good luck to all of you. So I'll see you in the final video. Thank you.